So let's get a sample of what the debate about what's going on in Gaza looks like. Here you're going to see Sean Hannity uh, with uh, Yusuf Minayar, the executive director of the, the Jerusalem Fund and Palestine Center in Washington. On a press release, the pro-Muslim organization said in part, quote, the U.S. government must not remain silent about Israel's unjust and disproportionate use of force against the Palestinians in Gaza because American taxpayers provide Israel with billions of dollars of aid each year. We have a right to demand that those funds not be used to take the lives of innocent civilians. Now, interestingly enough, there was no mention of the terrorist group Hamas and their role in this conflict. After all, they started this conflict. So my question is, why is America's largest Muslim so-called civil rights group showing sympathy to terrorists? Uh, so Ooh. you saw the setup right there. I love that he talks about pro-Muslim groups. That's the only group that it's like an insult to say you're pro. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I don't like, know what it means. <laughs> oh, a pro-Jewish group. What does that mean? That would be crazy, yeah. right? But like pro-Muslim is used as derogatory. But the whole framing is insanity. So if you uh, support Palestinians or are worried about civilian deaths in Gaza, sympathy for terrorists. Right. It says it in the big graphic, he re says it in his script, yeah. and then you show sympathy for terrorists. <sighs> okay, now he's going to go on, he's going to bring on a guest here as John's going to explain. Uh, but the whole use of the word terrorist is insanity. I'll get to that after we watch this. Yousef, Thanks, let John. me ask you this. If I fire 1,600, 2,000 rockets into your neighborhood, I kidnap three children in your neighborhood, students, and I and I kill them. What do you think? What do you think the proper proportionate response is? Well, maybe you should stop the ongoing, for decades-long military occupation of Palestinian territory. Okay. okay. Listen, before you listen, question, we can take it back to the sir, 1948 sir. partition plan, and we can look at the 67 war, the 73 war, and the hostilities abroad to Israel. They did give land for peace nine years ago. Now I'm asking you a question: If thousands of rockets are fired in your neighborhood, what, and, and kids in your neighborhood are kidnapped, what are you going to do, Sean? If what the are United you going to do? Sir, I'm, I'm going to try to answer your question if you Good stop answer. badgering me. Thank you. Uh, if the United States was uh, invaded by a foreign military and besieged and surrounded, uh, and the food that was coming into the United States uh, was counted by the calories so that people would be put on a diet, as the Israelis claim. You're, you, and bombs you, you, you were have being dropped. Perver sir, let, so you justify, sir, let me finish. No, uh, let no, me no, finish. No. You're justifying. Let the me finish, and no, then you can. You are making a rationalization for I'm, rockets you, and kidnapping and murder, and you expect the Israel. You want to blame the victims in this case. The victims. Wow. <laughs> My God. Okay. What would you do? I think that before the ground invasion, uh, the death toll was literally at one point 500 to one. Okay, now about 35 Israelis have died during the ground invasion, military uh, predominantly. I think uh, at least two civilians have been killed, but mainly military. But uh, the Palestinians, who are 80 to, 70 to 80 percent, according to the UN, civilians, they're not the victims. Israel is the victims for having killed them. Okay, now you could just flip Sean Hannity's argument easily the other way and say, well, you know, right the four now, four boys that were on the beach that oh, were murdered. So the four boys on the beach that are clearly killed, right? They're clearly not militants, clearly not Hamas. Every reporter that was there, Western reporters, all said the same thing. I mean, we got over 800 deaths now. If you take, you know, the rough math there, that's over 600 civilians killed. So we could say to anybody who supports the right-wing government of Israel, well, you supported the murder of 600 civilians. Aren't you sympathizing with civilian murderers? I mean, that's you're killing the, these people, and so it's all your fault, and they're the victims. Now, of course, he doesn't do that. Fox News will never do that. Yeah. No, it's always the Palestinians' fault, and if they ever do anything and say, hey, wait a minute, maybe... 800 people dying because of Israel's invasion is not a good thing. They're like, you support terrorists. You yeah. see that? For how dare you even say any criticism of Israel because if you do, you support terrorists. I'm not even entirely sure why they had them on the show because obviously he was trying to share his point. His tone didn't go up. Like he wasn't angry or aggressive when he was answering. He was just trying to explain his point of view. In the middle of that, as he's giving some facts and some points, 
He comes in there, Hannity does, and he just totally interrupts him and doesn't allow him to finish his point. Why didn't he allow him to finish his point? Is it because he's giving your audience actual information that goes against your agenda and the propaganda you're trying to give them? No, he's, so he's, he's trying to incite the audience. He's trying to incite the guy he's interviewing to get him to yeah. yell back. That's all it is. Yeah. And then so he can turn around and say, see, angry Muslims. Yeah. That's how they are. They're uh, full of rage. Now, the guy was trying to make a point, what would America do if we were occupied? Well, we know what Sean Hannity would do. He, he's, if we're not even occupied, he had Clive and Bundy on his show all the time saying, grab your weapons against our government, okay? Imagine if another government was occupying us, how Sean Hannity would tell you to grab your weapons then. But it doesn't even take occupying them. Like we've seen just in the past couple of years, news from, from just this week. If Obama tries to limit the sale of antique firearms containing small amounts of ivory, then they are trying to take away your guns and he is a ty he's tyrannical and you need to take him out. If there's a mandate where you have to buy health insurance, then the tree of liberty needs to be watered with blood. Like, it doesn't take anything near occupation, just like, like forcing them to have health care in the same way that they have car insurance is enough that they would be firing rockets into the White House. Like, they understand the situation entirely. If you, if you say, if you say uh, happy holidays as opposed to Merry Christmas, they say the atheists are trying to kill the baby Jesus. Like, we understand how they would react. Yeah. Uh, one more here, let's watch this and then we'll get even uh, more angry. I want to ask Youssef a question. Is Hamas a terrorist organization? Do I get to actually speak now? <laughs> you get to point? answer the question. It's a simple yes or no question. Is sir, Hamas. You invited me on here. Is sir, Hamas. You invited me on is here. Hamas, as a I'm guest. asking you a question. Is Hamas, whose charter calls for the destruction of Israel, is that a terrorist organization? That's a yes or no Thank question. Thank you for your question, and now, now I will provide an answer. Finally. It's very telling to me, that, and it should be telling to your viewers as well, by the way, that the moment you have a Palestinian voice on your program who begins to explain the legitimate grievances of Palestinians on the ground, not just organization. Hamas. Answer. Sir, let me, sir, answer let the me question. Finish. Am I a guest on your program or yeah, am I a, a, guest, or am I on a witness stand answer, here? Is Hamas a terrorist organization? The United States certainly considers Hamas a terrorist organization. Do you consider? I didn't ask that. what the United States so, think. I asked what I, you think. Okay. Can you hear? Look, if you if if you think if you think that uh, we are going to have any progress in this situation by simply yelling at me, is uh, that's not that's you, not really right, going to be helpful. Let me ask you nicely. Is so, Hamas no, let me a terrorist ask you, sir, a question at is this Hamas point. Is Hamas a terrorist organization? Yes let or no? Let me ask you a question, no, sir. No, you don't point. answer a question with a question. Is Hamas? What part of this can't you get through your thick head? I think is I, Hamas a terrorist excuse organization? Me? Yes excuse me? or no? I already answered yes your or question. No. I already answered your question. You did not. Yes. You had your chance. You didn't say Hamas say is a terrorist organization. So if you don't give the answer that I want, you had your chance and you didn't give me what I wanted. So goodbye. Okay. I'm not actually going to let you make your points here. I'm not going to bring you on to have a conversation with you. I'm here to yell at you, try to get you angry, and then I and say you're a sympathizer of terrorists. That's all. That's the whole point. And if you don't play along with that, goodbye. Right. So now let's talk about how stupid the word terrorism is. Now everybody uses it, right? We started this, all of our enemies are terrorists. And so now remember, terrorism originally meant if you kill civilians, uh, well then you're, you're not fighting against the military, you're t a terrorist. Now by that definition, everybody in World War II was terrorists. The Germans were terrorists, the Japanese were terrorists, we were terrorists, the English were terrorists, we firebombed Dresden, we firebombed Tokyo, and let alone the nukes, right? We killed hundreds of thousands of civilians, then aren't we terrorists? I, Fox heads exploding right now. Okay, and then now it's become so ubiquitous that the Russians call the Ukrainians terrorists, the Ukrainians call the Russians terrorists, the Syrian Assad regime calls everyone they're fighting terrorists, some of them actually are, and they call him a terrorist, and it, on and on it goes. So all of our enemies, and now everybody's enemy, is always a terrorist. And so it's so easy to say when we kill civilians, we're so well intentioned. Of course, we're the good guys when, when we kill them with our bombs. That's okay, that's not terrorism. We, it looks like a video game, so obviously we're not terrorists. If they fight back and they kill people that are civilians, well then they're terrorists. The reality is killing civilians on both sides is reprehensible. And unfortunately our side does it all too often as well. But that you will never see on Fox News. We're the good guys, and even if we kill their civilians at a 500 to 1 ratio, whether it's Israel, Iraq, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. They're the bad guys, and if you say anything against us, you sympathize with terrorists. Figure Have it you out. Challenge him yet to allow you on his show? 
Sean Hannity? Yeah. Look, one, I got banned from Fox News a long, banned? long you can't, time. You can't say they're no, just scared to have you on. You can't do what they always do by saying, you know, they can't get a certain Democratic guest on. Just be like, <laughs> you're just a big pussy, Sean. Just have me on. <laughs> what are you scared of? What are you scared of? <laughs> so then he'll do the usual badgering, but I'll badger right back at him, and then he'll cut my mic. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, I'll go. I don't give a shit, right? Good luck to you, Sean, right? That guy's a big blockhead. I mean, it's uh, he has no logic, he has no rationality. It's super easy to dismiss him. So, but he, I, you know, I'm not. Look, I'm not going to ask to be on his show. Uh, if he wants to have me on, great. I'll kick his ass all day long, right? We should start a Twitter campaign. <laughs> Get Jank on Hannity. <laughs> no, but I, I don't need to be on his show. Our show is bigger than his show. He should come on this show. That yeah. would be great if he came on the show. Yeah. Oh, he would wow. never. <laughs> With our, if he doesn't have the power to cut your mic, you think that pussy could well, ever scissors. dare to get in a real debate where he doesn't control the mics, where he would actually have to hear someone out? He, he has no logic. He'd run into a roadblock immediately. He'd be dead end. Oh, it does not compute. I do not know how to do this if I can't shut off your mic. Imagine a situation where um, Bill Maher has you and Hannity on as his guest. Mm -hmm. Like that would be an insane situation. I don't know whose side Maher would be on. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I'll take them both on. <laughs> Bill Maher and Sean Hannity on the issue of Israel. Come and get it. You yeah. want to do it on this show? You want to do it on Bill Maher's show? I mean, you want to consider him neutral even though he's with the right-wing government of Israel? I'll take him as, I'll call that neutral. No problem, okay? Yeah. I'll go on Maher's program and kick Sean Hannity's ass left and right and if Bill wants to jump in I'll kick his ass too.